G'day, fools. I'm Scott Phillips from The Motley Fool, and we're bringing you a brand new YouTube series. We're going to hit up some of our analysts and maybe even some of the other Motley Fool staff with their favorite investing books. I love reading a book. All our team do too, and I'm sure you probably do, or at least you might be on the lookout for a good investment book to maybe learn a few things about what can make for a more successful investment. Now, today I have with me Andrew Leggett. G'day, Andrew. Hey, Scott. Now, it was your idea, this whole series is your idea, so I thought it was only fair to let you be first cab off the rank or make you be first cab off the rank, depending on which way you want to look at it. But I love the concept, mate. I really love the idea of helping our viewers just, frankly, get a little bit more information from us as to what investment books they might enjoy. I reckon you could, now I know you pretty well, so I possibly could have guessed this one, but I reckon you could have, you could ask people for a dozen, 25 investment books. I'm not sure. Anyone would actually guess your favorite unless they also knew you. What is the book, mate? And tell me a bit about it. Well, it's How to Invest Like Warren Buffett. No, seriously. <laughs> um, no, you're, you're right. I'm someone that sometimes takes a slightly different approach to others when it comes to uh, investing approaches. And nice. look, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be honest. Some investing books out there are very tough to get through. So okay, I've went yeah. with one that is not only do I think provides a lot of insight, but it's mm -hmm. also a really entertaining and well-written book. So that's what I'm going to start with. The book okay. is from Michael Lewis, but yes. it's not the big short. It <laughs> is Moneyballs, which covers the Oakland A's. Well, it touches on a lot of things, but uses the Oakland A's baseball team in the early 90s and the approach that they took to help to become one of the most successful teams in the league, right. despite only having like a 10th of the payroll, which when you're in a sport that features big salaries yep. and the best players in the world, not being able to purchase those best players in the world is a bit of a competitive advantage. So a competitive disadvantage, sorry. Yep. And this is how they, it's a story of how they did it using data and just simply doing things differently to everyone else. Okay, nice. I like that. So a baseball book, a sports book, we should say Michael Lewis is a financial writer by kind of background and trade. The big short you've mentioned, Flash Boys, Liars Poker, I think was his very first one. Um, a wonderful, wonderful writer. You just got to write, write, read his stuff, read everything he, he's written. But first, start with Moneyball, according to Andrew. So, okay, baseball stories. I know you're a baseball fan, so maybe that tells some of the story. Data and analytics, I'm kind of getting that. Take, the, take us through what the book actually, you know, how does the book explain what the Oakland Athletics did? At, and this new, Moneyball was kind of the, the, the word that was coined to describe what they'd done. How did they do it differently? What was it about the data analytics? What did it allow them to do? What did they try and do? Just give us a flavor of the book itself. Okay, so for starters, this is not going to be a book that tells you if you do A and you do B, <laughs> you will get C result. You are going to have to use your imagination a little bit here. Okay, so what the Oakland A's did was, like I said, they only had like a tenth of the payroll of every other team in the league. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't go out and splash money on the best players in, in the, you know, in the world. Yeah. So what they ended up doing was bre breaking things apart and looking at things from a very quantitative numerical level and find out first what, is important to the game. And then they went and found a bunch of inefficiencies that were in the market. Hmm. You know, and that's what the that's what the baseball player market is. It's a market just like the share market is. Right. They found a bunch of inefficiencies that they could take advantage of and get pennies on the dollar. So like I said, you're going to maybe have to do uh, a little bit of work to try and understand how this relates to investing I'll mm -hmm. I'll give some hints so when you hear the name Bill James think analyst when you when you hear about Billy Bean the Oakland A's general manager think he, he's just a portfolio manager it's right. just that instead of companies he's managing you know a group of players no, the like players that. they're the companies and as you read the stories of those players you will see traits that uh, they're for companies as well mm -hmm. so David Justice is not a former you know, a former all-star that's coming to the end of his career, he's that value stock that, you know, yeah, his best days are behind him, but at the right price, there's great value there. Uh, Chad Bradford, the relief pitcher who threw underarm, you know, people 
pushed him aside because he had uh, this ugly approach that no one no one had seen before. He's that he could be that disruptive company that's coming with a new approach to the market that no one really understands. But if you really dig deep, you'll see that there's something there. Uh, finally, Jeremy Brown, the catcher that let's just say was athletically challenged uh, with his body, uh, <laughs> but was one of the best hitters in in the league when when he played. You know. That's an example. When you look, he's that company that when you look past things on a superficial level, there's, you know, that you, there's a quality business there. Mm-hmm. And because of all these little, um, you know, biases against them, mm-hmm. that is, that is how you can get value and get these market beating investments, which is ultimately what we want. I like it, mate. I, I've also read the book and it does, you know, one, one of the key kind of themes through the book is the, there was a way things were done. Baseball talent scouts would look for certain types of players with certain types of attributes. And it, it almost was, it, it was done because it was done because it was done. There wasn't any, really any basis for it other than the accepted wisdom was a good baseball player should look like X. A good hitter should do Y. A good pitcher or, or catcher, to your example, should, should have certain traits and characteristics. And so because it was the accepted wisdom, everybody chose the same players until, as you rightly point out, someone, hang on, that catch doesn't look particularly like a baseball player, but gee, you can play. And, and those kind of, as you say, inefficiencies is, is a key component. So when you do things slightly differently to the rest of the market, now they have to be right, by the way, being contrarian for the sake of it, not much fun, not a great idea. But as you rightly point out, they went back to the data and said, hey, here are some things. If you, if you can meet these criteria or the players that happen to meet their statistical criteria or ex- exhibit these specific database traits tend to do better. And as you say, you can get them on the cheap because no one else is looking at them as you, as you go. That is, as you say, a story for both growth investors and value investors potentially, or at least I don't hate those, I hate those terms generally, but you know what I'm saying. The examples you've given are, are you know, businesses that don't fit the mold, but there could be opportunity. So I'm not going to let you get away without giving us some money ball companies, mate. One or two, maybe you might throw at us. Um, they can be recommendations or not. Might be full recommendations or not, completely up to you. Are there a couple of companies you kind of look at and go, you know what, that's a money ball company. Maybe people don't understand it or people don't look at it or they ignore it are there money ball companies on the asx you reckon i think that i think there's a few and one of them i've already spoken about on our stock of the week which is rpm global Mm -hmm. now there's a company that when you look at the headline figures you don't see much of a growing business but when you dig deep into it and find out what's actually going on you see that not only is there a growing business Mm -hmm. there's potentially one that could be even better in the future than what it is now and it's because of this transition this evolution that i spoke about in this video and please go back and and view that if you want a more detailed dive into it. Mm -hmm. But that is one example that comes to mind. Another one that comes to mind is, you know, I'll call him, I'll call it the Jeremy Brown. Uh, You know, it's a company that's not going to borrow, you know, if I was to borrow a term from Billy Bean, you know, sell a lot of jeans. Um, And that is, uh, that's Brickworks. Yeah, it's a company that if you're at a dinner party and you're talking about, you know, the stock people, yeah, Facebook, Amazon, Afterpay, yeah, exactly. Afterpay, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like, oh yeah, I really like Brickworks. People are gonna just it's not gonna sell a lot of jeans, mate. It's I reckon the conversation will stop um, because you know what do they do? They make bricks. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's hardly the sexiest business in the world, but correct. Um, we're not trying to sell jeans as investors. We're trying to buy good investments that help us build wealth and hopefully beat the market. And this is a company that's been doing it not just for years, but for decades. Mm. You know, it's been 30, 40 years since they've even cut their dividend. You know, it's, yeah, they're not, it's not the sexiest company in the world, but no one's giving out awards. You know, no one's trying to say that you have to like come up with the cleverest pitch, you know, the most cleverest investment thesis to try, you know, Mm -hmm just buy good companies and Brickworks yeah. is a good company. It's been showing that for such a long period of time, but yet people will overlook it because that bias, that inefficiency that's in the market that people want to buy the next hot thing, yeah. not the, th- not the thing that's been doing it for such a long time. That's how Warren Buffett has become successful. You know, so many books are devoted to what Warren Buffett buys mm. and really he's, biggest secret is hardly talked about it is just buying great businesses and just holding them for decades and let compounding Mm. do its thing he's not being overly clever and he's become successful because he's not being overly clever he'll leave these inefficiencies 
you know, that they talk about in, you know, that the other MLB teams were doing in, um, in Moneyball, he'll, mm. he'll let them keep making those inefficiencies. He'll keep it simple and just do what obviously works and buy things and end up taking advantage at pennies on the dollar because when things become popular, they become expensive. Very nice. There you go, Fools. A great book recommendation. A couple of free stock tips from Andrew as well. Thank you, Andrew, for sharing those and sharing your thoughts about Moneyball. You are a massive baseball fan, mate, but Moneyball is a great book that I've read and loved. It, it absolutely, uh, you don't need to be a baseball fan at all. You don't even need to be a sports fan. Maybe it helps, but the book, the story, Michael Lewis's writing are fantastic. And not only will you enjoy a good read, you'll get a few investment tips, some analogies. Maybe you might have to make yourself, as Andrew says, draw your own metaphors, but there's plenty there. The I, I, wants I, to do things differently. Sorry, I, I do use quotes from Moneyball regularly when I'm looking at companies. But I will say also, you you may be tempted to watch the movie. <laughs> Read the book. The movie's great, but yeah. the book is where you're going to get the insights from. The lessons. Yeah, no, good point. Good point. All right. Now, fools, don't forget you can, and I hope you will, uh, like and subscribe to the Motley Fool Australia YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell because we're going to have more of these videos Plus more stock over the week videos, more stocks in focus videos, more companies in the news. The YouTube channel is going to get bigger, better and busier and you don't want to miss it. So like, subscribe and do hit that notification bell. Until next time, Andrew, thank you for your time. Full on.